This is about ageing. And it's about uh, sort of the role of ageing in communities, the role of ageing in societies, and more importantly, how we as GA clubs uh, and people involved with GA clubs can work with older people and, and use older people to create a dynamic uh, within our clubs. And we can, how we can work with older people as agents of change within our clubs. So the other part of that is there are sometimes older people are vulnerable and we also want to be able to see how we might work with vulnerable older people. But this is, a, this is about the dynamic aspect of aging. It's not about the passive aspect of aging. It's not about looking after older people. It's about older people as agents of change within our club. Uh, uh, and, and, and within the GA. So that's the really, the, the first thing I want to say uh, about, 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 about ageing. So I'm going to do a little bit probably on the theory side and the number side, and then Ballandrina are going to tell you how it actually works in practice. So uh, that's, that's, that's the way we want to do it. So I'm not going to talk about everything that's on the slides, but there'll be a few words I want to talk about. And the first thing I want to talk about in line this morning, Niall Mine, I gave a talk this morning where he talked about younger people and the potential that's within all, within all younger people and the idea of making sure that we bring out that potential uh, of, of younger people. Well, actually, it doesn't stop. Uh, that's the good news as well. When we get older, uh, we still have a lot of unused potential, unused energy, and that's what we want to harness as well. The most important word on that slide, that's what I'm going to talk about. If you run, that's, that's all of what I'm going to talk about. But the most important word on that slide is on the second line. It's about capabilities. It's about the inherent capabilities as within us all. I believe that our capabilities don't stop because I reach a certain age. Uh, I believe capabilities is an important part of our life right up to the time we die. Uh, so that's the really critical word about enhancing, maximizing our capabilities and ensuring that we create an environment, a club, a community. Now, when I talk about a club, I kind of will interchange between club and community and the role of club within community. So it's really important that we see the club as a dynamic element uh, uh, within, uh, within a community. That's a key. So capabilities is what I really want to, to, to focus on. Uh, through this talk. As I said to you, we'll also talk a little bit about vulnerabilities, about social isolation, about making sure that we uh, pick up that, but equally we want to put the emphasis on, on the dynamic element, uh, the agent of change, the older person as a vital contributor to what we do within our clubs. Okay, so the good news is that uh, we're all living longer. Uh, and uh, that's been a really success story. Uh, you know, for every, so for every 24 hours that we live, you know, you're gaining five years of life expectancy. So every time you wake up, remember that. So you've got five more years, or oh, five more, five more, five more hours. Uh, so, uh, and the good news is, the good news is that uh, life expectancy has improved. So, uh, you know, I was born in the late 1950s. So my life expectancy then would be much different than, than life expectancy now. So life expectancy has gone up. But even more importantly for those of us who are heading towards older age, yeah, older age, we can expect at age 65 to also live longer. Yeah, so when you reach 65, you can expect to live a further 18 years if you're a male. So uh, that's good news, uh, provided your quality of life is good. But it also shows the potential. If in 18 years, uh, 18 years, uh, you know, what can you contribute? Yeah, what can you do? How can you make things better? My view of life is very simple. It's what you can do to make, to make things better. Uh, and because if you're making things worse, uh, uh, really, you should really think about it. Uh, so it's about making, about making things better, about being a net contributor. Females, of course, have all the advantages. So they live an extra three years at, uh, if they reach 65. And that, and that, and that follows too. You can see over time, look, uh, if, you're, if you're 75, life expectancy is 75. In 1993, you'd expect to live 7.8 years. Uh, if 2003, it went up to another 9.2 years. 2013, it's close to 11 years if you're 75. So if you're 75, you know, you can expect to live on average till 88. You might live longer than that. So that's a lot of years, yeah, to be doing something. It's a lot of years to be left outside. It's a lot of years to feel that you don't have anything to contribute. It's a lot of years to feel, to feel that you're residual uh, to communities, yeah? Just think about uh, how we can harness that energy. Uh, within that community, how we can use that community uh, to change things, uh, to, to engage uh, within our club. And we'll talk about some of the benefits of that engagement later on. So that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to look 
Uh, look at females there at 75. It goes up, went up from 1993. You could expect to live to 85, another 10 years. But this is the last line on the slide. Uh, it's now 13 years uh, at 75 for females. So you know, reaching those ages, you still, have a, you still have a lot of time left. And a lot of time means a lot of things you can do. Uh, now, one of the things that you... Oh, oh, why would I bother raising this issue? Surely that's self-explanatory. So much to do. I'm 75. I have so much to do yet. Because there is a thing called ageism that sometimes even me who works in the area over so long period can sometimes suffer from. Ageism means putting, putting a, a stop on this kind of activity. It's, it's, it's pervasive. Sometimes we don't even know we're doing it ourselves. Oh, I couldn't do that. I'm 70. Oh, he, he or she shouldn't be doing that. Sure. What would he know? Any of you have kids young, you know, probably suffer this every day. You know, uh, what would you know about it? Uh, you know, uh, you don't understand. Yeah, so all of that is sort of pervasive sort of uh, ageism. So that's, that's the cultural context. That's what stops us maybe engaging. That's what stops us uh, 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 bringing older people into communities. So the contribution and capabilities, look, this is, this is, <coughs> Aging is a success story. It's one of the parts of Ireland's economic and social development. We're so used to, we're so used to damaging ourselves by telling ourselves uh, that this, uh, about the problems of this country. Look at the successes. Uh, uh, an aging population in general, uh, uh, the vast majority of older people are healthy and well, yeah? living good lives. Yeah? Spending power is strong, reasonably strong. Uh, older people are pretty well engaged, pretty well enhanced, pretty well embedded in, in, in the pension system and in the welfare system. Caring roles are really strong. Older people are doing so much work within their own families, caring for each other, caring for children. Older people also have spending power and assets and so on and transfer. The transfer of knowledge, huge. You know, so we do this intuitively, yeah, if we're allowed. It's when you're not allowed the alarm bell should be ringing. It's when you're outside, when, when the value of wisdom and the value of experience and the value of knowledge is not seen as being part of the, stand, the, the sort of standard transfer across generations. <coughs> That's when your community is weak, if this is not seen. And this is what we have to fight against all the time, that culture of ageism that says, once you reach this age, you are no longer part of a fully functioning con net contributor to society really crucial that we, that we as GA clubs, GA as communities uh, 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 are strong here. And the other is the whole of volunteering, which I want to go on and talk about. So volunteering. So what do we know? We know that a lot of people over 65 volunteer already. You know, nearly, ne nearly 30% of people over 65. 41 million hours in the, last 20, in the last 12 months. That's a lot of hours to be contributing. That's a lot of benefit to society. Uh, it's freely given doesn't mean it's free. It's freely given means it doesn't mean it has no value. It may mean it has more value. So what we want to do is to acknowledge and tap into that. Sometimes we, we're so busy doing that we don't realize what we're doing. So this is really to acknowledge uh, uh, involved in sporting organization. Broadening and deepening volunteering is a realistic goal. Look at the numbers. Look at the life expectancy years. Look at the amount, uh, uh, the amount of people who aren't volunteering. There's so many people we can bring in and engage yeah, if we want to. And we can do it because we're in communities, we're of communities. And one of the things that when uh, the Valandrine story is, it has to be dynamic from within. We can do it from within, not from outside. We don't have to wait for this to happen. We can do it, in, it's an internal dynamic to clubs that, that we know who the older members are. We know former players. We know what's happening within communities. We are embedded in communities. We have the knowledge to engage. Uh, this is not something, oh, we don't know these people. We do know these people. So what's stopping is getting out and making sure that, that they're involved in our clubs. So this is work from, this is just data from TILDA, the Irish Longitudinal Study, uh, uh, done, done by Trinity College. This is really good data on the 50 pluses. Look, the, the, the most important point on this slide is those who never volunteer have a lower quality of life than those volunteering at least even once a year. So even if you do it once a year, so volunteering has an impact on quality of life, even if you do it once a year. Think about doing it once a month, one, uh, or, or once a week. Volunteering is good. Volunteering impacts positively in your quality of life. This is, this is as enhanced as positive, talked about, the minister earlier talked about healthy aging. 
or healthy, healthy Ireland. Healthy Ireland, volunteering is part of Healthy Ireland. So it's an easy variable, it's an easy win. So let's get people involved. Uh, the social initiative could be called the health and social initiative because it has such an impact on quality of life. Uh, this is from Tilda as well. Uh, one of the things that I just want to point out in this slide is the third last line, the quality of life increases with social integration. Again, that's data, that's, that, that can be shown. Then the point I want to make from this slide is, however, there are people in our communities who are isolated. There are people who are socially, who are socially outside uh, uh, communities. 6% of men and 7% of older women are socially isolated. Whatever parish you're in, whether you're in a rural area or an urban area, because one thing, you sh one thing we know, social isolation does not discriminate between an urban and a rural area. It does not discriminate. Uh, now, not everybody who's, social uh, who's socially isolated is lonely, uh, but many people are. So this is the group that we maybe we want to uh, ask ourselves the question, are we doing enough? Do we know them? Are we doing enough to reach out as GA clubs? Can we do more? You know, are there people, for example, I work a lot with people with dementia, are there people who are cognitively impaired, yeah, whom you might want to bring down to the GA club or get somebody to bring down to see a match even during the summer? Uh, um, you know, these kind of questions, reaching out to people who we know have cognitive impairment, yeah, uh, that engagement can can trigger off reminiscence, it can trigger off higher quality of life, for example, in people with dementia. There is so much we can do that doesn't take any resources. So, uh, um, I'll skip that. Okay, so, I'm winding down now, just to remind Aoife that uh, I am winding down. I'm on the, I'm on the descent, right? Uh, so, social inclusion in the GA, this is what you want to talk about, but you can't talk about social inclusion in GA unless, you, unless we're aware of the context of which surrounds those relationships. So social inclusion in GA. So look, there's plenty of good examples. People in this room who are doing much more than, than my words uh, can do justice to. Yeah, and you're going to hear about them in Ballandarine. But there are things we can do. We can build on the existing organisation within clubs. Uh, we can build on infrastructure. You know, clubs should not be, facilities, infrastructure should not be left idle. A minute of the day, in my view. If it's not kids in there, it, it, it should be families. If it's not families in there, it should be older people. You know, it should be part of the functioning, dynamic element of community. It should not be left idle for any amount of time. Uh, you know, and the great thing is seeing you know, a number of clubs have built walkways. You know, that's good for physical health, but it's also good for, for mental health. It's good for social connection. It's good for social integration. It allows communities to see each other. It allows visibility. You know, little things like that uh, really add to a community, reaching out. We need to build on, life, on past connections, good and bad. And an interesting comment from the area group here, a man talked about, you know, we, we're great at bringing back teams who win county finals, uh, win all Ireland. We're not so good at bringing back teams who nearly did it. Uh, you know, we need to engage everybody, just participants. That's all you need to be. No, if you stay standing, that's, that's enough. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to have won a county final uh, to be engaged or involved or brought back or feted or supported or celebrated. You know, and that's part of what we need to engage in. Uh, social networks, we do have the frameworks, the networks, the connections. We do know an awful lot. Even in, you know, people talk about urban areas, but in urban areas as well, people do know a lot about communities. You can reach out to, you know, the formal providers like the HSE, you know, uh, the public health nurses. Uh, all of these can tell you something about and, and work with uh, voluntary groups who want social outfits, for example, with people with dementia. As I said, I work in this area a lot. And we are always looking for ways to engage, ways to connect, ways to bring, make, make people visible. Key is, when you're invisible, it's almost always over. When you're invisible, you know, whether it's to do with race or gender yeah, or age, it's over as part of a, a properly functioning community. So really, visibility is absolutely crucial to sort of understanding the sort of the nature of the relationship we want to foster. Uh, the identification of vulnerable adults, really important. Social, social initiative can do much more, I think, should do much more about that. Reaching out to the six or seven percent, maybe you can't do it yourself. Maybe the club can't do it itself, but it can help support 
uh, you know, other organisations, make themselves available, make themselves uh, a, a, a conduit for this kind of uh, uh, reaching out from the sort of formal providers. It, it doesn't have to be done yourself. Sometimes it's not possible. Uh, anyway, uh, strengthening reciprocal arrangements, a really important word for me, is reciprocity, reciprocal relationships. If I have a relationship with you that's power driven, yeah, uh, or if I have a caring relationship that's power driven, or if I have any sort of relationship that's power driven, that's not reciprocal. So we need to engage as equals. Similarly, when we involve engaging older people, it's an equal relationship. It can't be a relationship because I'm doing this for you because you're older or because you're vulnerable. Older people have the dynamic. They are the agents of change. They can be the agents of change within your club. Now, it's funny. Sometimes people say, what, what do you mean by agents of change? Sure, it's young people are the, are the changers. Young people are the dynamic. Young people have the energy. But that's not true. You know, I see, uh, you, know you, you see people who are... Social, entrepreneur, social entrepreneurs in their 60s, in their 70s, leading new ways of looking at relationships, really critical uh, to a fully functioning community. So we need to have reciprocity. It cannot be passive. It cannot be doing stuff all the time. Sometimes we, we do stuff for other people. That's fine. But a relationship has to be built on equality, and the equality of relationship within that is crucial for, for older people. So uh, the vulnerabilities we talked about, Time, I'm not going to. I'm going to skip that. But you know, they're all there. We know. We know the things that that that, that identify with vulnerabilities. You know, transport, uh, social isolation, access, safety and security, new arrivals into the parish. You know, all of this is part of that kind of that kind of potential vulnerabilities uh, uh, that that surround us. Men tend to disproportionately perhaps find it difficult to deal with losses. They are maybe not always as well connected. Maybe they they, they are not networked are wired to sort of maintain and support these connections as they go through the life course. Maybe sometimes men have to be uh, triggered more to attend, to come down, to participate. And you have to be, you have to be, um, you, you have to be sometimes innovative uh, to allow, to get that to happen. You have to think, how do we get more men into our clubs, back into our clubs? And there are so many different ideas uh, within clubs and I'm sure in this room that could tell me how that's done but sometimes you have to remember it you know that there are particular vulnerabilities you know bereavement is another particular time really critical time in the life course of, of, of people's lives and you know all the time sometimes we say look uh, uh, maybe uh, sh uh, should I uh, sh uh, should I make an approach somebody has a bereavement you know I would always err to say yes you know, engage as quickly as possible. Really, there's critical life events that happen, people, that we can do much more of within clubs, and bereavement is one of them uh, uh, as a process. Um, uh, so these are the kind of words that I use for intergenerational bounty. As I said earlier, we could, ho we could host a whole day on any of these words, <laughs> but they are critical words. They are really important words. Values really matter. What are the values of your club? Who is determining the values within your club? Who is determining the relationship values within your club? Is, this, is the main values of your club to win the next match only? If it is, it's not a functioning club. Uh, so, so you need to think about what values are driving you within communities and embedded within communities. What is your club doing to improve the level of integration, the level of inclusion within your community? You can't do everything. You know, after all, you know, the game is everything, playing is everything. But at the same time, I think we can do more and uh, about the, whole, the value. These are some of the things about the intergenerational bounty, wisdom, belonging, connectivity, place. Place is so important for all of us. You know, and place can be, the value of place can, is transferable. You know, people need to know and people need that values. Uh, if you're in charge of a, of a young team, under 15s, under 16s, they need to be told sometimes the importance of relationships to uh, to the past, to history, to all the adults within the community. You know, it has to be a place where people are comfortable, but when people talk to each other. And I think we need to say, well, this needs to happen. You know, we need to engage this in a formal way to bring younger and older people together. Trust and confidence, you know, I would say creativity as well. Creativity doesn't stop because you reach a certain age. You know, uh, so it's really important. You know, I'm, 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 I'm still a coach, nearly barely hanging in there, but, but I know now so much more than I knew 10 years ago. 
I know now so much more than I knew when I started coaching. I started coaching in my early 20s, where I knew nothing. I probably knew nothing for about 30 years. Now I feel I know something, yeah, and I want to be able to transfer that through the system. So, so we know, we, we know that, this, that this is important. So an age-friendly club then, look, I would say to people, look at the age distribution in your club. Are you happy with the age distribution in your club? Are you happy with, uh, are you seeing enough older faces? Uh, are there enough older people around the club doing things? Not just seeing them, doing things. Are they contributing? And net contributors. Look at the gender mix as well, I would say. I just, uh, look at roles and responsibilities. You know, I think that an older, uh, older people have still a role to play on pitches, for example. Maybe with younger. I mean, I, I can't do some of the stuff I did 10 years ago on pitches. But I can working with a 20-year-old. 30-year-old who can do things that I used to be able to do but I can't do anymore. So therefore, we need this kind of relationship building, age-related intergenerational club goals. Achievable. Don't put concept, abstract con concepts. Say, we want to do this. We want to have 40 more people aged 65 plus doing things in our club by this time next year. 10, whatever number you want to put in there. 20, 30, 40, 5, 2 more people. So really strong goals that are achievable. You can say, yes, we did do it. No, we didn't do it. Internal communication strategies, the one I talked about there, autonomy versus paternalism. Don't do paternalism if you can. Autonomy is really the thing. Give people autonomy, control. Listen, we all now know that good teams win all Ireland because they're autonomous. They have leaders. They're built, they're built to perform, internally able to perform. Yeah, it's not just the manager on the sideline looking at them and telling them. It's internal. It comes from within. Equally, we need the ability for people to be able to do things within clubs and be supported. Uh, uh, I, think of, I think of my GA club as all my life's a circle. I think I started there when I was five, and I want to end there when I'm... Uh, well, I, I won't give them the life expectancy, for, uh, but uh, uh, I want to finish there when I'm 75. Yeah, and I want to be down there on the last day or the second last day of my life. Yeah, I want to be down there doing stuff, uh, engaging. So... Uh, uh, so the conclusion then, so it's very hard to have a conclusion, except you're always supposed to have a conclusion, so I put it up there. Uh, so th there's no conclusion really, it's about you. It's about what dynamic you bring into uh, the club, the community you want to be involved in. It's about how much you want to support and promote. But th the population is out there. Population aging is success. There are more and more older people. We're living longer. We're living longer at 65. We're healthier. Yeah. And when we're not healthier, you still have a role to play in making us healthier uh, through social inclusion activities for those who are socially excluded. Older people are important. There's an enormous potential through social entrepreneurship of older people to enhance clubs. Intergenerational dynamic activities are important for stable and caring communities. Okay, so maybe it's a little bit densely written, yeah? But that's the most important sentence uh, that, 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 that I would say, that I, that I would want you to take away. Intergenerational dynamic, not static, not something doing for, doing something with, being led by older people, engaged, are important for stable and caring communities. A stable community is one where we can say, you know, there are relationships that are strong here. There are values here that are transferable. We are working with the schools to engage with older people. We are working with the nursing homes to engage with people who are perhaps not be able to be out in the communities anymore. So, these kind of relations are important for stable and caring communities. The question is, do you want to create stability and a caring communities or don't you? Are you doing enough? I, I, I should say, are we doing enough? Yeah, and I'm sure most people in this room look at me, are doing what they can. We just need more people to do it. A social isolation, that's, that, that's where we want to get to. Social initiative is part of that, but the social initiative is much broader. The social initi initiative is bringing the word social into our lives again, yeah? Because some sometimes we forget the word social is a genuine social connectedness uh, within communities. Uh, personhood and equality rather than paternities. Personhood is the most inherent uh, sense of identity of who I am, what I am and who I am. And I think uh, there are people who want, who want their personhood, uh, uh, who, who, who want to be able to think about who they are, what they are as they get older and want to make a contribution. It's inherent to them. They want to be asked about it. They want to foster. They want it developed. Uh, and some of those people are living silent lives in your community right now. 
So what can we do to enhance that? And I think, look, a strong, age-friendly, socially inclusive GA club is a powerful force for good in urban and rural communities. That, to me, is the, the, all the evidence, some of which I gave today, is, is supportive of that statement. I think what we have to find is a way to allow us to put it, uh, to have it a little more focused within our clubs and within our communities uh, uh, in, 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 order, in order to improve the situation. So I think you're going to hear now uh, from an example, a really demonstrable example of how this can be put into practice. But these are some of the ideas uh, that maybe surrounded those kind of practice ideas. Thank you very much.